So I am so delighted to be back today with probably my most popular guest on my channel, the beautiful Dr. Christiane Northrop, who I think needs no introductions. We've been lucky enough to speak several times before. And I was just saying to Dr. Christiane, she's even bought the sun out in the UK. So <laughs> first day of spring, um, you know, things are looking pretty positive. We're going to have a brilliant discussion today about your book and all your work and expertise about dodging energy vampires, because there's so much relevance to what everyone's realising has been going on in terms of looking at um, why we fall for these things, how manipulatable we are, but most importantly, what we can do about it. That's right. That's right. And you know, more than ever, when I wrote the book, Dodging Energy Vampires, I didn't know that it was predictive programming for now. So this is the yeah. book I wrote it in. It came out in 2018. And I actually didn't think that, uh, you know, because it was it sort of, I'm just looking to see the, yeah, 2018. I didn't, I thought it might be too negative, you know, yeah. for, for Hay House to publish it, but they were uh, very willing to do it. And what I began to notice from working with uh, so many other people and of course my own life is that there were, so let's, start, let's just dial it back. And there's a woman named Sandra Brown who wrote women who love psychopaths. And it was a book whose cover was so awful. I couldn't even look at it for years. Right. And then I met George uh, Simon who wrote in sheep's clothing. And he's a therapist who a PhD psychologist who was teaching therapists 25 years ago about personality disorder. And uh, <clears throat> most therapists believe a lie. So let me just get the lie right out on the table. And most of us empaths believe this lie too. And that is that only people who've been hurt in childhood hurt other people. Yeah, And therefore there is really no evil. It's just a lack of love. Now, on some big cosmic whatever, that may be true, but I happen to know from talking with Danny Henderson and Elena Danon that there that the earth has been um, parasited by regressive AI and alien species, and they're off planet now. You can't understand the current COVID situation without understanding the wars in the off-world area star wars and all that now i always knew the matrix was a documentary i didn't know that star wars was as well turns out it is but in our own individual lives so let me get it right down to where you live the people with personality disorder particularly with start with narcissistic personality disorder is a spectrum like autism you can have someone who's a little aspergy they they miss social cues and that's down here and then over here is downright uh, adult diapers, no speech, banging their head against the wall. Mm -hmm. They're on a spectrum. The same way with narcissism. There's people who are just self-absorbed. They have no insight into it. They don't want to change it. It can be a fixed lesion, a fixed lesion, like it's not going to change on many of them. But the ones just with the traits you can live with if you hold them to task. Mm -hmm. And then over here, are the psychopaths. And that is the group, the global predators who have, have been running the pandemic thing, but they also funded both sides of all the wars and they are a banking cartel. And it all started in England, by the way. Yeah. Well, there's the Syrian mafia, but there's the Pilgrim Society and the Pilgrim Society, they don't want to be known. But if you if you look it up, you'll see that it's all the same players. Mm -hmm. And I think Prince Charles, or I don't know if he's king now. I don't think so. I haven't heard. Um, but he's one of the big players. So uh, America was never free from this banking cartel. And that's all coming down now. But what you need to do in your individual lives 
is look for the one in five people who has a personality disorder in your life. And you can tell them because they wreck every Christmas dinner, they drive everybody crazy, and their main weapon is splitting, splitting people from each other. Now, what have the global predators done? They make, uh, I mean, I remember Janine talking about she could not go home for Christmas um, or the family asked you to wear a mask or get tested or you can't come in here unless you've had the shot. The only reason that works is that we humans have not evolved enough to have our own sense of self and our own sovereignty. Now, that's the narcissistic group, very self-centered. They're born with a superior ego. They think they're better than everyone else. Empaths, healers, are born with a negative ego. We keep our ego alive by looking for things to improve about ourselves. We are, when we say we're light workers, we're not kidding. Our entire electromagnetic field, our aura is so bright it's like when we walk into a room, we all we have to do is walk into a room and there's two things that will happen. Toxic people will just leave us alone or the energy vampires will flock to us like moths to a flame. And here is our work. This is the work we all must do. Oh, okay, and they have malignant intuition. So they tell you things you've always wanted to hear. So let me give you yes. the classic if, if you're a woman. Oh my God. You're so sexy. You're so beautiful. Oh, and I never, or, or let's say me as a doctor for years and years and years. Oh my God. I'm so glad I found you. No one else can heal me. You are the answer to everything. Now you're someone like me. You believe in holistic medicine. Holistic practitioners have been under the, under the gun forever. And all the healer people that they called witches were burned at the stake. So you're kind of ready to flinch, right? And then someone larger than life, who's usually better looking and well-connected, comes and sees you. You don't see you, they see you. And they begin to manipulate you and use your light. Because as Sandra Brown pointed out, and she researched this, there's a subgroup of empaths who have what are called, um, what are they called? It's it's these positive traits. Oh, yes, yeah, super they're, traits. Super traits, thank you. Those are the blind spots. They're, but they're, they're not. See, here's the thing I want everyone to know. The super traits are truly super traits yeah. of loyalty. Get it done. Uh, accountability, all of it. So what we women with the super traits do, we can go in and turn around a hospital um, a, a conference, a CEO, we can do all of that. And then when we pick our mates, we think that they are, they're a fixer upper because we fall in love with someone's potential. Yeah. We must understand. I once heard a, a coach say, potential means they ain't done shit yet. Yes. And I think <laughs> we've got to, too. you know, we've got to really take a look at that. We're the people who bring home strays. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that is a fixed lesion, like your eye color. It's a it's a fixed trait. You literally are congenitally blind to the darkness of others because all you see. I mean, it, it, it's we must be like Jesus in some way, as all we see is light, is is their goodness. Now, here's the thing, people: you are not Jesus. All right, you are not, and. I think we all have to understand that because what happens is we will stay in a relationship for 200 years if they just give you a crumb right just in time. They fi You finally had it, you're about to leave, and then they'll do something and you think, oh, wow, they get it. They get it. They see it. They'll change. No. All that means is they've once again impaled you on their hook. What is their hook? Using you for what is called narcissistic supply. That is your money. It's your sexuality. It's your energy. It's your ability to cook. It's your ability to clean. 
It's all of those things. And because we are so self-contained and so capable, we will do the work of two to three people Mm. And we know exactly what it takes with a narcissist. And, and I am almost hearing the women listening to this <laughs> who have been married to the same lump for 30 years and they're waiting for him to change. But after about 30 years, they realize he's not going to, and they've donated their entire lives to this person. Now, here's the thing until an empath wakes up to how he or she keeps it going, they're going to just attract one after another. Now, it normally starts with a narcissistic parent and sometimes two narcissistic parents. And so what you're trying to do, you're always trying to bring love where it wasn't. These people are not capable of love, but you keep trying harder and harder and harder to win their love. Okay, let's say you couldn't get mommy's love. And this applies equally to men, by the way. And so then you marry mommy or daddy. And then you wake up to that finally. And then it's your boss. And then it's, in my case, when I uh, created my Amada Life Prairie Marifica supplement line, it turns out I worked with uh, a captain of the universe who at the end of the whole thing, I realized had four different passports and probably worked for the Mossad. I mean, I have worked with the best of them. I've, I mean, the lab work I did for dodging energy vampires was very hard won. I know what I'm talking about. So I did a whole online course with Sandra Brown, uh, with George Simon. What George Simon said is 25 years ago when he would teach this stuff to therapists half the room would walk out. They so needed to be needed. They so needed to be the healer that they couldn't accept that there were people who just weren't going to change. How many people have been to marriage counseling? Okay, I met a, a wonderful doctor because I see all the good men when I tell them, oh, I know you go for the woman at the bar who's not smiling because you think you can make her happy. You're such a good man and you're going to uplift that woman and you can make her happy because masculinity is to protect and to serve. Yeah. And good men, I'm telling you, there is it like, there's a rose of good men uh, along the highway desiccated from women who go from one to another to another. These are the women who've been married three, four, five times. Mm. Um, and you can't, do right by them. You cannot do right by them. So when George Simon began to teach the therapists, they couldn't, they couldn't handle it. Now they can. And if you read his book in sheep's clothing, here's what you'll see in the, in the credits, people saying, oh my God, I got, I got further reading this book than four years of couples therapy. I yeah. finally know what I'm dealing with. And until it's named, narcissistic supply is named narcissism borderline personality which and and many of the um actresses in hollywood feel like they have borderline personality you can't take your eyes off them they have something going on where you know the eyes are like a tractor beam and they pull you in these people tend to be better looking way more charismatic um they're the ones you know in Hollywood and all of that. So us commoners will think about the royal family and, and all of their, um, uh, you know, that so-and-so is dressing them in the fashion industry and and all, the, the, we should all aspire to be like this. And what it does, it just keeps feeding them narcissistic supply, life energy. So they get puffed up larger yeah. than life and you become over time uh, a desiccated wreck. Now, the good news is once you wake up to this, you, you can begin to turn it around. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up to it, 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 I just saw it everywhere. You, you see, like, you'll see a couple where the guy's really good looking and the woman is sort of overweight and really dumpy. And you're thinking, what does he see in her? And then you realize, oh, wait a minute. The reason she looks like that is he's got his umbilical cord connected to her 
and is sucking all of her blood toward him. Yeah. Now notice, what did we have for the last decade mm -hmm. in in media, mainstream media? True Blood, um, the Twilight uh, series, all these vampire TV shows and movies. Why? Yeah, it really did, yeah. Because that's real. That's real, uh, energetically real. And they don't want to come out in the sun. Notice that. So their skins crack and they can't be out in the sun because the minute you expose them for who they really are, they deflate like a balloon. I will never forget. I had one of my best friends who was a total narcissist. I didn't know it at the time, but I remember her being here for my daughter's high school graduation. And she was always larger than life and she'd been a model and she was, you know, five foot 10 and beautiful and the men all flocked to her and all of that. Well, I was starting to realize what she was all about. So I um, did not give her any energy and we kept the conversation other places. She literally diminished mm. in size and energy over into a corner because she wasn't constantly being filled up with narcissistic supply from the outside. Now, by the way, the shadow of the astrologic sign Leo is narcissism. That's the wow. shadow of it. I happen to have Mars in Leo in my chart. So my ideal man is like um, the senator, the president, the head of the surgery department, all of the rest of it. And when it's a really wonderful person, they're magnanimous, they're loyal, everything that that Leo is. But when they're narcissistic, all bets are off. And in the lectures that I would give throughout the years, I would notice that all my energy would go to the two to three men in the audience who I felt I had to convince yeah. of what I was saying, convince of my worth. Now, if a man is too good looking or too charismatic, then he has to prove to me that I should even have a cup of tea with him. I mean, or even be around or, or answer his questions because these people tend to take up all the oxygen in a room. So what we empaths need to understand is, I think a lot of them are um, <clears throat> alien hybrids. I don't even think they're human. And, and the thing you need to know is they know you better than you know you. So and you need to sorry, can I just say about that, Dr. Christian? That's yeah. really fascinating because look at all the um, you know, the real public awareness now about the AI technology. And now we know how much they've been tracking all our movements on social media. And that is such characteristic of the AI, is that they do know us better than we know ourselves. They know our habits, we know what we click, they know where our eyes go when we're looking at something. So it all fits in perfectly to the bigger control agenda that we're now very well aware of. That's that's right. And once you say no, mm. we're not having it, then you get into the part of you that's made in the image of God. See, they don't have that. They don't have that. They, I, I have a friend who's been in a marriage for a long, long time, and her husband has put her down for their whole lives together. She's also an artist. He's an artist. But he always uses what she creates as an inspiration. And then he, it's mm. like pseudopodic ego. Uh, you know, a pseudopod in a white blood cell is this thing, this foot thing that goes out and it engulfs whatever it wants to bring back yeah. into the cell. They're like that. Ian Wilson Schaaf used to call it the addict, the pseudopodic ego of the addictive system, but it's really how narcissists work. I'll give you an example. Back in the 70s, women were very interested in taking back their own birthing power. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Suzanne Arms had written The Immaculate Deception. Uh, we had the, the midwife Suzanne Arms writing spiritual midwifery, women were waking up to the ways in which we had given the doctors control over our bodies during birth. Yeah. So what would the hospitals do? They would 
paint a room mauve, this sort of off pink color. They'd paint the room mauve. They'd bring in a beanbag thing, chair. And then they would put the fetal monitor behind a curtain. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. But women came in and they saw, oh, it, it looks a little more homelike. Yeah. Pseudopod ego of the addictive system. They bring it in, but nothing, the paradigm didn't change. The birth was still considered kind of a surgical procedure. Mm -hmm. And that was during the time when the C section rate absolutely skyrocketed when yeah. fetal monitoring came in, because again, that is an AI system. We have studies that show that the presence of a supportive woman, even across the room, looking at you during labor decreases labor time in half it cuts it in half and it decreases the c-section rate by 60 70 percent wow and these studies were done years ago by john kennel who uh, who created the first neonatal intensive care unit and marshall klaus an OBGYN. and they did the first books on maternal infant bonding so what does the hospital do? It doesn't change anything. It just says, oh, here's your baby. Okay, so you've got your, your 10 minutes of bonding now. It took 25 years from the time that I was in the hospital saying the baby needs to be skin to skin to get colonized with the mother's skin uh, flora uh, before being taken to the nursery. It took 25 years for the hospital to finally embrace skin to skin because the paradigm is always separating humanity from our humanity yeah. separating people from each other think of how people are born i remember this i'm a med student at dartmouth everyone is sort of an aryan god up there at that time and uh the baby's born you have to drape the mother you know you got to get all the surgical drapes on her so that that you know the birth canal is this little op that's the operative site right and then the baby's born, they cut the cord too soon, they whisk the baby off to the nursery, <gasps> like this, the mother's, a, uh, you know, and I thought, you wouldn't do this to your dog. Exactly. You know, you're, you're, you're with animals all the time. That's yeah. the dumbest thing you can ever do is separate the mother from the newborn, because then after a sensitive period, the mother will reject the, the baby. The hormones of bonding are all there at the it's beautifully orchestrated and yes does it sometimes go wrong absolutely nature is not perfect um so what we have done we've set up our whole society to embrace something outside of ourselves like the fetal monitor you know when i would go into birthing rooms i'd go into when a woman was laboring and how are you doing and everyone the husband the nurse everyone they'd look at the monitor they'd look at the tv screen yeah. to see how he was doing instead of how about you go in here and talk to your baby who's in here mm -hmm. and you can stop those deceleration patterns on the monitor if you just go inside but what we're seeing now with the rise of human consciousness. And by the way, I heard from uh, Magenta Pixie's latest thing that she did with Pam Gregory, that today is the beginning of new earth. Today is it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you had to pick a day, I think I know when we didn't wipe ourselves out in 2012, then nothing could stop the ascension that is coming. It's time for earth to be free of these slave systems. So our job is to not participate in the slave systems. So how do you do that? All right, first, you want to identify the friends who only call you when they need something. Oh, they, yes, I've got a few of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. They never, they never just call. I got a call from a woman the other day, and she said, she left a message. She said, I'm just calling to tell you how much I appreciate you and your work. And I thought... No, I'm waiting. Where's the hook? Where's the, could you endorse this? Or could you? No, that was a miracle. Yeah. So there are people that I haven't heard from in two to three years, and they just want something. Or I noticed that my best friends always, who always seemed more glamorous, more knowledgeable than me, more, you know, the Hamptons kind of New York thing, 
they never were just interested in having me around. It was having me around to do card readings for their friends, to do healing, to do uh, whatever. You know, I was kind of a feather in their cap. Oh, we're going to bring her down, you know, yeah. to the tail party. But they weren't a real friend. So what I'm loving about where we are now is, uh, and I just decided, um, Mark Atwood, in fact, uh, said to me after we did our, our little podcast together, um, and he just texted me and he goes, you know, probably time to get Oprah off your website. Um, just a thought. And I thought, oh my God, he's right. Why, you know, it, it, that's the past. I, I'm grateful to Oprah for having me on and bringing my work to, to the masses. I'm very, very grateful. But that ship has sailed. Mm. And that kind of celebrity is no longer of interest to me in any way. And remember, we've all been brought up, you know, the Kardashians. And oh, my God, I just listened to a whole thing about how who they are and who's behind that. And we've literally been sucked in by these power structures. So with your friend who only calls you when they want something. Here's where you have to begin retraining yourself. They call. I'm moving on Saturday. Can you help me? I know you have a truck. Now, you've looked forward to a spa day on Saturday or maybe reading a novel or a t going to a movie. But you think, oh, you know, okay. Well, you know, they need me. That's what we do. It's the knee jerk. Of course I will help. Yes, of course I will help. What you do instead is you say, let me get back to you. So that's the elementary beginning. Let me get back to you. So, so the main thing you don't want to do in that moment is say, oh, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. yeah, right. In that moment, you must learn to say no. Yesterday, I want to give you an example because I'm in the more refined part. I had a series of papers and books like way high in my office. And I just took a pendulum because I just I just don't have time to go through all this stuff. I took a pendulum. I just put my hand on all the books. I'd get a yes or a no. So now I have the, you know, huge pile that's going to go to our True Health Group library. And then all the requests to do various podcasts. I just, again, didn't even read, just put the pendulum. I need something to streamline it because if I start to read it, Absolutely. then I will say yes to everything. I will say yes to everything, which is saying no to me. Mm. And I have for three years now, three solid years, been doing everything I can, traveling everywhere, speaking to everyone to try to save their lives. Mm. Try to tell them, do not get. Mm -hmm. And I really, at this point, um, it's too late yeah. for me to, and, and here's the other thing. They don't want to hear it until they, people, they don't. It's like a battered woman mm. who I, I have a friend from Liverpool and she was in a relationship, a battering relationship and was in the hospital in Canada. Her mother came over and said, okay, honey, what I want you to do is I want you to write down in a journal everything that he did and how you feel right now. I'm not going to tell you to leave him, write it all down. Mm -hmm. And of course, and her mother had been battered. So she understood that her daughter was going to have a hard time leaving this guy when he gets down on his knees and he cries and I really love you. And oh my God. And then, you know, you're finally thinking that you're getting the love that you never got, but you are not. And uh, then later, when she wanted to go back to the to the guy, she read her journal. And then her mother went to the guy's house in order to get all of her daughter's belongings out of there. And because she'd been through it and because she stood up to one of these energy vampires, she said, give me my daughter's stuff. Just give it to me. And yeah. they broke down every time. We have to understand they are not operating from an internalized operating system. They are operating on 
the permission we give them to keep doing it to us. Mm -hmm. As my friend Amy Loftus says, your denial of who they are and what they are is their protection. And the more we deny it, the longer it goes on. So here we are, right? And you and I have been out there and you and Janine's been out there and you've had your channels removed. And, you know, that's how the global predators work. Um, Twitter is back on. That's fun. I can actually tell the truth on Twitter. Um, but at this point, what did it do? We've realized who is who now. Yeah. We have realized who folded, who didn't fold. And the ones who are not coming back to us and apologizing for the horrific behavior. I mean, I cannot believe the way I've been dragged through the mud in the mainstream media. And I have a friend who is a fixer and she said, well, I can fix your Wikipedia profile. I said, oh no, no, it's a credential at this point. Yes. You know, and it's the same with being part of the disinformation doesn't. So what happens is you, you learn to say no. So the first one is, um, let me get back to you. Then the second one is, I simply can't. No excuses. You're going to want to do an excuse. That's the key, isn't it? Not getting into the excuses. Yeah. No, I simply can't. I, I simply can't. And that's going to be so hard for you because you're going to feel so guilty. Mm. So I and, and I have another woman. Here's another technique called gray rock. All right. So let's say, I don't know if anyone's at an office anymore, but if you if you were or your church or whatever, and you always have someone come over to take up all your time and to talk your ear off, they get all filled up and then they leave. You're drained. Mm. So what you do is you become a gray rock. You don't respond to them. You don't give them any attention. What do we empaths do? We shine the sunshine on everybody. Everyone leaves feeling better. And you got to notice when you're drained. Okay, so, so you be so, so it's, important. Yeah, yeah. so you just be a gray rock. Then I want you to notice how you feel around certain people. And what I noticed over time, it was the weirdest thing. I would become so sleepy. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the middle of the day, lunchtime, almost like I was about to fall asleep in my soup with this one woman, very famous fashion designer. I will not say her name, but I'm at her house and I could not keep my eyes open. I'm digging my fingernails into my palm. She had this gorgeous oriental rug. I just wanted to lie down on the rug and go to sleep. It's like the poppies in the Wizard of Oz. You're yeah. literally, oh my God, you're just going to sleep. So notice who that is because what they have energetically, they have an umbilical cord in you and it's streaming all your lifeblood to them. So even if they're larger than life, even if you think they can do something, this is the other thing. Do not think like in the past, I had a number of people who wanted me to get them on Oprah. Yeah. Get me on Oprah. Everyone thought she was my best friend. Absolutely not. That's all theater. We were never friends. It looks like you are on television because her magnanimous nature, that's her TV personality, is to fluff you up when you're on camera and she had the best lighting in the business and the best hair and makeup people. But that's all theater. I would go, the show would end, I'd go back to the green room and out to the car. I mean, yeah. there was no behind the scenes. Uh, oh, well, I thought you were friends. No, no, that's all theater. So when someone says, and I think we're at the end of that, you know, can you get me on this? Can you get me on that? Don't, don't go there. Mm -hmm. I mean, just don't think that someone can do that for you. God can do that for you. And when you fill up with your own goodliness and godliness, you will begin to attract the resources that you need. I, I think one of the most horrible things that has happened to the younger generation is this business of becoming an Instagram influencer. Oh, yes. What the heck is an influencer? Mm. What? So that we can look like you, um, dress like you, 
buy your products. Uh, you know, uh, to me, when I when I had my hundred and seventy thousand Instagram thing taken down, one of my younger friends said, "Oh my God! I mean, how was that for you? You worked so hard to build it. It's like <laughs> it's nothing. I mean, my career came from." being at the bedside or in the clinic with dozens and dozens and dozens of women. My my whole career is actually based on something real, not being an influencer somewhere. I, it, you know, it's based on, it's, you can take it to the bank. I know what yeah. I'm talking about, you know, and I don't really care about the, you know, it, it became a thing the number of followers that you had and all of that stuff. I don't even like to call them followers. I like to call them my community members. Exactly. I mean, just this is, again, the power of the language and the spells. It's constantly putting that energy out there. I mean, followers, what a horrible word. Isn't you know, it? It is. It's so derogatory. Yeah, yeah, it is. Absolutely. And so uh, so pay attention to that. Mm. And begin to do, so we have uh, learning to say no, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. And then, but here's the thing, you need to pay attention to the inner child mm -hmm. who is so afraid that if she says no, she will miss out on love. Mm -hmm. and, and I have that, like, that was my whole deal. My whole family was um, massively athletic out into the woods and the skiing and the backpacks and the whole thing. I just wanted to stay home by the fire and read a book. But I remember this. It's from what my mother said to me when I didn't want to go skiing one weekend. And I said, well, you know, I think I'll stay home, read a book. And she goes, well, you could do that. But if you go skiing, you may meet the man you're going to marry. <sighs> okay. For a Libra with four planets in Libra in the fourth house. Are you kidding me? Oh God, if I don't go skiing, I may miss out on my life partner. Do you see what that does? Yeah. To a, it's like, you don't want to do this, but it's the only, you're going to do stuff you don't want to do in order to get what you want to have. Yeah. The fear of missing out is a huge thing now, isn't it? It really is. And, and I think you've hit the nail on the head where it's even more prominent now. Everyone feels they're missing out because people splash all this full stuff over social media and who can ever live up to that? You know, it's. And that's one of the things, you know, because I have a Neptune conjunct the sun, the, you know, I was born with these scales in my, in front of my eyes. I just found out a couple of years ago, I have congenital cataracts, which was so perfect. And, you know, they're not doing anything, but they were, you know, just a little cloudiness there. And I thought, isn't that perfect? That's Neptune conjunct the sun, meaning you want to see things in the best possible light up here. And the, but the lower uh, vibration of Neptune is illusion and addiction. Mm. And so therefore I named myself way back with the help of medical intuitive Carolyn Mace, a rescue addict. Mm. So I would try to rescue everybody from themselves. I even got a call once on a Saturday night from a former patient whose daughter was in labor at a hospital I didn't even have privileges at and was facing a cesarean. And the mother wanted me to call that other doctor and intervene on behalf of her daughter to prevent the C-section. Can you imagine? I mean, and here's the worst part. A part of me thought maybe I should do it. Mm. I mean, talk about a rescue. And we and so we the other thing that would help every empath is to realize that everyone has his or her own soul journey. Yeah. I happen to believe that many, many, many people who are on earth right now and who are um, you know, maybe two shots, two boosters, whatever, they've made their choice. They did not want to stay for the new earth, for the great awakening. I believe that many people came and they are many people are leaving. Well, we know that five to 10,000 a week are leaving. And yes, many were tricked 
and there are innocent there's innocence there on the earth level on the spiritual level everyone chooses their parents they choose where they're coming in what they're here to learn yes it's a gangster planet and it's been a prison planet and we're finally getting away from that prison planet and the key will be when the empaths those of us with the skills and the light and the air purifier when we finally wake up to our power and stand in our true sovereignty we're born sovereign made in the image of god and jesus said these things and more ye shall do also now what you're going to find and i remember you know after my divorce and all of that and i and i thought oh my god you know i am not going to follow the path laid out for me by society yeah. like okay now you're a single divorced woman so now you're going to be your mother's date at everything and there will be no more um, men for you. It's too late to blah, 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 blah. And so I defied it. And that's when I learned Argentine tango and created a tango uh, dance floor in my house. And for nine years had all of that wonderful stuff going on with close embrace dance and meeting all new people. They all went woke uh, when COVID started. So I haven't uh, danced since. And I, and I don't want to be... Um, with that group because the frequency now is just too it's too dissonant it doesn't yeah. it doesn't work if you have not seen what's out here now and you haven't seen the psyop then it's no fun to be around that it, no it isn't it isn't and um it's, it's fascinating isn't it it's sort of that that journey of accepting that people are on different paths can be quite a tough one can't it Yes, because here's the thing. You know what they need to do to heal. Absolutely. I talked to um, uh, Joni Patrice. I did a little thing for her uh, Vedic astrology thing. And the woman interviewing me is an astrologer. Now imagine this, Catherine, because this I never thought of. Okay. So she's an astrologer. She sees what's in the chart. And therefore, she knows what the life lessons are that are associated with those particular patterns. Mm -hmm. And she can see what's coming if they don't do the work, the higher vibration of what's in the chart. And she said, and most of the time, they don't do it. No. See, what I know I came in with, because I had my first astrology reading, uh, you know, when, when I was about 32, on the banks of the Mousam River in Kennebunk, Maine, and this wonderful psychic astrologer, and she said to me, you know, there are so many of your male, your male, your female medical colleagues who come to see me, but they would never share it with anybody. Someday I'm going to have a cocktail party and I'll invite all of you and you'll you know you'll see that you all believe the same thing but what I knew from the minute she talked about my chart then I took that very seriously oh okay I see what this is and I see uh let me give you an example I have Mars and Pluto at I think it's 15 degrees it might be 22 Leo in the second house it's that Pluto takes the mars energy down to the underworld and so it means incredible um <laughs> lack of success in one-on-one -on -one relationships with men because i had to not because it because my soul needed to learn to be whole unto myself you see so i was always projecting onto a man that i needed a man to do this, that, or the other, to run my business, to be happy, to whatever. And that was right there in the chart. Now, if you have that in your chart, it's the last thing you want to do because everything in your everything in your being says, no, no, I'll be fine if I yeah. can get this to happen. But it's not true. And then you find over the years you do all the things that you thought you needed someone else to do. And by the way, a man could be getting on Oprah. A man could be a grant in your business. Yes. A man could be a job. In, in other words, it's anything 
outside of yourself that you think you need in order to make something happen. Mm -hmm. So I did all the affirmations, you know, and affirmations are, uh, as Michael um, Beckwith says, they make something welcome. They don't make something happen. They make something welcome. I love that. That's such a good way of saying it. Isn't it? So, you know, yes. so when you're doing your, your affirmations, you're practicing the vibration of when you have it. And then when you get it, it won't be much of a deal. I'm telling yeah. you, it, it won't be that much of a deal. So, you you know, you put it out there, what you want. But remember, if you are an empath, you have to, have to, have to acknowledge mm -hmm. the presence of evil. You it's have so to acknowledge it. Yeah, it's so important. And I think, you know, we've had so much discussion over the last few years of sort of making excuses for n not, you know, well, people don't want to see it. They're too kind to this. But yet at some stage, you have to. It's a deep survival instinct in front of all of us. You know, we would never, it's a standard joke in my family because we've all got hip issues. And if we were Labradors, we'd never have been allowed to breed. <laughs> we wouldn't have passed the hip score. But in all seriousness, these things are inside of all of us. These skills are inside of all of us because they are absolutely key survival instinct for recognizing good over evil, danger over safety. And without that, without that part of your personality, you are, you really are um, opening yourself up to anything. Yeah. You Now, so remember that we had this big uh, kerfuffle mm. between uh, Matthias Desmond and uh, Peter Bragan. So Peter Bragan wrote The Global Predators, We Are the, the Prey. And Matthias Desmond talked about the mass formation yeah. thing, not psychosis. I don't, he never called it a psychosis, the mass formation, where what do people do when they are under the thumb of a predator? Mm. How do people behave? And of course they behave the way people started to behave in Nazi Germany mm. and again in COVID and in the Milgram experiments. And I couldn't believe, I, you know, remember at the beginning of this, we would, we'd share all these things about, well, you know, did you ever wonder how you would behave in Nazi Germany? Now, you know, I mean, yeah. as I watched one person after another, so the big, uh, debate between Matthias Desmond, whose book apparently has now been banned. Really? And he's, he's a Belgian psychologist and it's, yeah. it's about, I can't remember the name, but it's uh, the psyche of totalitarianism or something. He's right on the mark. He's right yeah. on the mark. I loved his interview so that I saw. Yes. Yeah. So here's the thing, like he says, if enough of us resist, we need a frequency of, that's the key to ending it is enough of us saying, this is insanity mm -hmm. and standing up instead of folding. Let me give you insanity. We now have hospitals in Florida where they're having 22 stillbirths a month, 22. I remember three in my entire career as an OBGYN. Oh my goodness. One of the nurses, the OB nurses who I met uh, questioned that. The director of nursing, told her, you can't question it. And if you do, you will not get your bonus. So she did not get her bonus. The bonus to the nurses to keep their mouths quiet about the 22 stillbirths per month is $6,666. You, you can't, you can't make this up, can you? <laughs> can't make this up. And the Bill Gates um, um, patent for hooking up your biometric data to cryptocurrency is 060606. And now, you know, they're moving for the digital currency. So the another first person in the UK to get this, I can't say the word, was William Shakespeare. <laughs> I, the, one of the greatest yeah. storytellers. That's of funny. Now, and you're right. I remember that. And that, see, that's when we knew, okay, you're watching a movie. Yeah. And, but, but our part, everybody, our part is the simple things where you say, let me get back to you. I simply can't. Mm -hmm. Or when you do gray rock. Oh, and then you need, you need at least one other person who can see what you can't see. Absolutely. It's valuable. At least one, two is better. So what I've done, and then I want you to 
congratulate yourself. See, because here's what we empaths do. Oh my God, how could I have not seen? I am such a fool. No, no. You want to say, oh my God, I am better at being sucked in by a psychopath. I am, I am like, I get a trophy for that. I am better than anyone I have ever met. You've got to laugh. You've got to raise the frequency to laughter. Then, uh, and I, I covered this in, in the course and in the book. So you want to do, all right. So let's say that your mother was the, the self-centered narcissist. And so that's your mother, that's your whole life. And then you marry your mother and that lasts however long it lasts, 15, 20 years, but you wake up, right? So you, you get a divorce or whatever. And then your best friend, you find out, has those same tendencies. And, but that only lasts four years. And then your business partner who you're working on, you know, and I'm talking about myself here, you find out uh, that he's a sociopath and has four passports and you go oh my god I you know missed another one yeah and and then I've just been made aware of uh, some of these scalar energy systems mm -hmm. that are a dark technology that a certain off-world species that's no longer on the world left behind because they they don't care if they wait a hundred years yeah. They want to kill, they want to kill off humanity. So my message and and I got sucked in by that big time. And so what I would say to people when you when it comes to healing modalities, you want things that are not of AI. You want yes. them uh you want them nature. So structured water, bird song. I just found out that you know bird song is what opens up the pores in a plant in yeah. the morning. Yeah, which is and then copper wire you know from the steeples and oh, down so cats everywhere cats everywhere cats i have everywhere. two yep. cats are really good and by the way if you want to know if a device you're using is healing see where the cats go this is my, my point as well okay i've got this gorgeous company that i've got to know they are the most lovely people and they do this beautiful emf protection stuff and it's an area i've been studying for years and yes. of course so difficult for people to prove where they work well I've got a lovely naturopath friend that's done the blood analysis that actually shows but the thing that literally um clinched it for me was two there's a beautiful blue thing that protects your whole house and where do I find my cats lying by that and then there's a little disc that you put under your phone and or and you're doing and I did an experiment so I put because I've got five cats so I put one of those discs under, I have four identical bowls of cat food, chicken, and I put one of those under there and they all went for that bowl first. Wow. So if I'm ever not sure, I ask the cats. That's right. That's right. And so what I noticed was with some of these scalar systems, the animals don't go near it. You yeah. never see a picture of a cat curled up in front of it ever. Yeah. And that's how you how you know. Um, so what I realized is, and then uh, we're talking about having people who can see. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, I work with someone for 40 years, Diane, who scheduled this, and she's never been wrong about yeah. anybody. But I have to go through my process of seeing it for myself because my knee-jerk response is, no, this person is wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I don't see any problem. And she's like, no, I'm getting a bad vibe. And, you know, and, and now it only takes me, you know, sometimes I'm really good at just saying, oh yeah, you're right. I can see it when they're really clever and I can't see it. It takes me a couple months or more, but here's what I know. When I get overly enthusiastic about something, it's generally a problem. <laughs> yeah. I'm so with you on that. And, and this is where, you know, good friends that you can have honest conversations with and worth their weight in gold we don't want our friends that are just yes people that agree with everything and you want per friends that where your skills complement each other and that you can have those difficult conversations and I'm very lucky I've got a couple and um yeah worth their weight in gold definitely and now the other thing is the friends that are not your friends um will try to distract you and they'll one of this uh, people who was my uh, good friend after my divorce, and uh, <clears throat> she was actually trying to come between me and my daughters. And so she would do things to split. Here's what they do. It's divide and conquer. Mm. 
So if you have one in your house, like a, a, a sister-in-law, someone like that, they're always getting other people to fight. And on the psych ward, every good psychiatrist knows that when they have a particularly skilled borderline on the ward and the psych ward, the nurses will start fighting with each other because wow. one of the nurses will side with the patient who is their professional victims and they're incredible at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they should win Academy Awards mm -hmm. and then the other nurse will see it. But the person who sees it always comes out looking like the bad guy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I've had this a lot, even with, um, you know, sort of what we've been going through there. And I, I laugh about it now, Dr. Christian, because I, I'm like you. I have fallen for things so many times. But oh, the yeah. thing is now is I don't ever blame anyone else for it. I laugh because I can see, oh, yeah, that's where I've done it again. <laughs> Did it again. Give everyone the benefit of the doubt, and you don't want to think anything nasty about anyone. But now it's it's quite an amusing joke. Now I I can even if I don't get it straight away, I can laugh at all the clues I missed. <laughs> so, yes, and yeah. that's what that's what we have to do. Let, let's be clear. We came here. Um, it you know it's a gangster planet. Mm -hmm. We are star seeds, and Alex Collier said there are two hundred million of us who came back in time to to right a great wrong mm. and we know who we are and so we are the ones who saw it when mm. it started now we didn't see a lot of other things i didn't see 9 11 for what it was until recently in this i didn't know that both sides of both world wars were funded by the same Absolutely. people yeah i didn't know any of that i didn't know about uh project paperclip or um operation uh, mockingbird i had no idea but the minute i saw it i saw it and yeah. you did too. like yeah. when i watched uh, out of shadows official and then the first 10 episodes of fall of the cabal i said oh i see it i got it yeah and then you can't not see it and now in the in the movement that you and i are in now what we need to do moving forward is make absolutely certain we're not being split uh, from other people. And, and remember, there are those in our movement absolutely addicted to drama. They are oh, addicted to drama. So are you finding yourself, I'm no longer able to watch a whole lot of the podcasts that I used to watch. I, I'm not interested. Because well, I don't, yeah, I I don't I watch very few now, and in fact, different things back more to more of my passions in terms of um, moving forward and how we can create new things. Because actually, it's a bit like a relationship, isn't it? Is when you see certain things, you can't unsee them. Um, so again, a lot of that comes. But we're in a in a way where you think everything has a purpose. So I'm not saying that in a way of being sort of judgment about people but equally I can see a lot of the the current people now behaving in a way that they've been criticized seeing celebrities for behaving yes I can yes. see that coming like a mile and I'm just looking back and and saying you know okay that's fine that's their journey if I I've learned enough now to realize if I step in and try and say something then it's going to backfire on me so I'm just like your journey, your radio, your ride. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what's so been so funny. Okay, to, to diagnostic. Do you remember when uh, someone named Emily Oster wrote a piece for the Atlantic uh, that everyone just landed on, and she said, "You know, it's time for COVID amnesty. Mistakes were made on both sides." Uh no. Now, in the past, think about that. An empath would say, "Yeah, you know, okay, yeah, I, all right, all right." No more, no more. Mistakes were not made. Yeah, there were no mistakes made. This was on purpose. We've been gaslit. Every uh, I don't know if you saw Tess Laurie's incredible, um, sort of a an anthem of this time. Uh, it's it's beautiful. Um, you know, she's she's there in England and has a a beautiful coalition a coalition. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyhow. What the other thing we empaths have to feel, we have to learn to love our righteous anger. Yeah. Righteous anger is a cause of hell. When our innocence or that of another has been threatened repeatedly, the normal human response is to rise up in anger. 
And when, so when people say, keep your voice down or, you know, that anger is not very attractive. Are you kidding me? We need to find within us the, the strength to destroy that which is destroying our own innocence. So I don't know about you, but I, I know that if I had to, I could kill somebody. I've got no problem with it. I just know it. Yeah, uh, completely. And, you know, this is the role of the divine feminine. You know, most in nature, um, it's normally the mother, not always, but they will do anything to protect their young. And this is this natural instinct that is completely natural that has been drummed out of us, taking us away, getting us into our mind, away from our hearts. And, you know, at the end of the day, I don't, most people that are real humans, and that's a subject for another story about the ones that aren't, but we do know in the, in the, in the, in our heart, what's right and wrong, the difference of right and wrong. And the deniers of it is because they haven't got to a stage, in my opinion, of being able to admit when they were wrong. And I think what you can see that those people that have done the work, they're very happy to admit, oh, that one fooled me, that one fooled me. Yes, and always. On and not, not be attached to it. It's right. so different, such a different approach. And it's so freeing. And if people realize what a sense of freedom it comes, we're saying, yeah, I was wrong about that. Now I know better, I'll do better. And we've all been there. Completely, That's and we will be go again. You know, I don't think yeah. we'll, ever, you know, I certainly talking for myself, I'm sure I'll be hoodwinked again, but at least I can laugh about it most of the time now. And compared to, let's say, 10 years ago yes compared to three years ago we're we're really being honed in the crucible of uh of spirit so you know that the wheat has separated from the chaff in a big way and that will continue that will continue and and the healing modalities that are coming in are the ones you want to pay attention to are the ones with the water and the, and who the company is and who the people are and, and all the rest of it. And I really realized we need to stay away from AI type technologies because they are made to entrap us. And yeah. I found out that they're, they're um, actually there to harvest our souls. They have technology to do that, but quite frankly, your iPhone and television have been harvesting our souls, but they've also allowed you and I to do this together. I mean, exactly. that, that's, the, that's the high vibration. I've met people now all over the world. I have a, a better group of friends than I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah, and me too. I, yeah, and I no longer feel like a black sheep. We've all come together. And it's really exhilarating. And literally the best is yet to come. I can feel that. Yeah. It absolutely is. And I think, you know, there is so much positivity here. There's so many people with so much good information to share. And what I would say to people is there is if you're looking to make changes, ask, you know, reach out to people that you do trust, because, you know, the whole point of this journey we're on to me is to learn, evolve and, and, you know, keep changing and you can make significant changes in your life as soon as you decide that's what you want to do. That's right. And one other thing I wanted to tell people. So when remember when I said you're falling asleep around yes. someone, the other thing that happens is that we empaths tend to take on the feelings of others, the anger, the depression, you'll be with someone and you suddenly find you're depressed and that's not yours. You're taking it on to purify it. So see yourself as an air purifier and then make a commitment that you are no longer going to allow your physical body to be used in that way. I will not take on, you know, the sort of excess depression that's around here and do that emotion for someone else, not doing it. The other thing, and you must find this, Catherine, I had two cats that died and I, these were rescue cats and right after my divorce and they were, that's when I learned, oh my goodness, the love and the healing that you get from a cat is beyond anything I could imagine. And they both died of cancer. And I believe they took the cancer on for me. Absolutely. And um, I just went, I'll send you the link just before I record with you. I record with the most amazing empathic animal 
communicator, whatever you want to. I'm an incredible lady for Sweden, and she has got so many messages that are just going to help us all through this journey so oh, much. Good. Because good. just like we mustn't take it on for others, it's. I really feel that we've reached a stage now where yes, animals might be willing to do that, but we we're strong enough to keep it and transmute it ourselves and not pass it on to any other living beings. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Oh, it's always so, so wonderful. I would really encourage anyone that hasn't got that book, Dodging Energy Vampires, I really would encourage everyone to go and get it because there's so much gold in there and it is really, really applicable to what everyone's going through now. So, you know, I think there's something in there for everyone. Thank you so much for your time. It's always such a delight. I'm sure we'll be speaking again. Very good. The book's also on Audible, so I can read it to you if you'd like. <laughs> That's my favorite. I love the Audible ones. I really do. Yeah, perfect. Right. Thank you, good. Christine. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen and if you feel inspired please do share with your friends and family my goal is to inspire as many people as i can to live their best lives to stay curious and to raise their consciousness and that of the collective so to do this i need to reach as many people as possible and this needs your help if you feel drawn, would you be willing to share your favourite episode with five different people? This helps us spread the word and also helps me encourage some exciting new guests to take part in this podcast. If you feel drawn to do that, I will be very, very grateful. All the links and discount codes where applicable for all the products that I support are on my two websites, katherineedwards.life and katherineedwardsacademy.com. All of the products are personally tried and tested by me, my family and my clients. And finally, please do press the follow or subscribe button, depending which platform you're listening on. And above all, stay curious and stay free.